It's Thursday, July 4. In the headlines, a flash flood watch in effect for low-lying areas in Jamaica. Government assessing the damage caused by Hurricane Beryl. In business news, Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark assures of financial safeguards in the event of a disaster. Regionally, CARICOM leaders seek financial aid for Hurricane Beryl aftermath. And in sports, Sport Administrator Brian Lewis speaks about sport management. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone. The flash flood watch for low-lying and flood-prone areas of St. Thomas, Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Catherine, Clarendon, Manchester, St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, Hanover and St. James has been extended until 5 p.m. today. That's the word from the Meteorological Service of Jamaica. A flash flood watch has been discontinued for low-lying and flood-prone areas of Trelawney. St. Anne, St. Mary, and Portland, effective immediately. As Hurricane Beryl continues to move west, northwestward, and away from Jamaica, its outer bands are forecast to remain across the island this afternoon. These outer bands are likely to produce periods of showers, mainly across southern and northwestern parishes. Given the likely high levels of ground saturation due to the torrential rainfall from the passage of Hurricane Beryl on Wednesday, any additional rainfall is very likely to result in flash flooding. The forecast is for mostly cloudy conditions today and isolated showers likely across northwestern parishes this afternoon. A flash flood watch means that flash flooding is possible and residents are advised to take precautionary measures, keep informed by listening to further releases from the meteorological service and be ready for quick action if flooding is observed or if a warning is issued. The meteorological service says it will continue to monitor the system. More than 400,000 Jamaicans are without electricity. Director of Corporate Communications at the Jamaica Public Service says remote restoration of power supply is being done until the authorities lift the hurricane warning and clear the way for its teams to enter flood-ravaged communities. Prime Minister Andrew Honus declared Jamaica a disaster area for the next seven days as the island weathers the effects of Hurricane Beryl. He made the announcement during a national broadcast on Tuesday evening. The measure will remain in force until July 10 and may be cited as the Disaster Risk Management Enforcement Measures Hurricane Barrel Order 2024. The emergency services will seek to restore power and water as quickly as possible. However, citizens should not seek to remove down poles or power lines or disturb water mains. Please use the emergency numbers given to report damage to public utilities and do not take unnecessary risks. Additionally, the JCF and the JDF will be fully mobilized to maintain public order and assist with disaster relief as soon as the hurricane has passed. The security forces have developed strategic plans to counter any potential threat of looting or any other opportunistic crimes during this period. The National Works Agency says the Bog Walk Gorge, which was impassable on Wednesday, is cleared of debris. The Port Royal Main Road has also been cleared of debris and is again passable. However, commuters are being asked to continue to exercise caution in using the corridor. Meanwhile, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, has advised that several traffic lights in the corporate area are out of service. Motorists are urged to proceed with caution and consider fellow road users to ensure safety. 
On Wednesday, Hurricane Beryl lashed sections of the island, causing flooding and damage in the corporate area. Jamaicans braced for the worst. Here are some reports from our news team, even as the island was being affected by the storm. We begin with Marlon Samuels. The swirling bands of wind and rain named Beryl grazed the southeastern end of Kingston as it roared ashore as a Category 4 hurricane. With 145 miles per hour winds, Hurricane Beryl pummeled Jamaica's coastline. The storm surges and huge waves saw boats being tossed around like toys. This was the cry from the main road leading to Port Royal. Port Royal Main Road impossible! Impossible! Port Royal Main Road impossible! Barry left a trail of destruction. Trees were downed and roofs shredded by hurricane force winds. Hurricane Beryl brought down power lines, leaving 65% of the island without electricity. Over in the second city, Montego Bay, many are thankful as the predicted destruction did not materialize. Assessment of damages and cleanup activities of piles of debris are now underway. For the news on PBCJ, I am Marlon Samuels. A report was also filed from the disaster-prone area of New Haven. New Haven, population 7,000, is a low-lying community at the bottom of a steep hillside next to the Duane River. The river regularly overflows its banks during heavy rains and storms. The passage of Hurricane Beryl left the community marooned. Brittany Walker filed this report as the hurricane approached and also after its passing. New Haven is frequently flooded due in part to climate change which has caused more frequent and intense storms and hurricanes. Climate change has contributed to gullies being overwhelmed resulting in flooding. A scenario residents of New Haven frequently face. Well, it's hurricane and so serious and just you will be surprised to it better than Gilbert and what just come up for some more stuff, you know. But we don't put on some luck on it. They are appealing to the relevant authorities for help. My preparation for this weather, this storm that is coming, I have to ice up everything in my house because when the rain fall, the ill bursts come down like Dun River Fall. We have all the water from up in the people that we live up in at the hill come right down back on us. We get a lot of red dirt and stuff like that. I get a lot of things damaged when the rain fall. When the rain fall in New Haven, it's a disaster. We don't have any gully clean. Our gullies need to clean and dig down because basically we can walk through the gully and all of that contribute to the flooding when rain fall. We would really love to get some assistance with the gully that are down here so that when the rain fall it don't impact us that much is as in flooding out our house. We can't afford to ice it sometime so we have to do other preparation like putting blocks or two or three blocks out where they put two things them on, put to bed them on it. It's a disaster when rain fall in New Haven. They are also asking for collective attention to be paid to the effects on the community as a result of climate change. For the news on PBCJ, I'm Brittany Walker. Information Minister Senator Dr. Dana Morris-Dixon says the government is assessing the impact of Hurricane Beryl. Speaking to the press on Thursday morning, Senator Morris-Dixon explained that the government is aware that the hurricane has caused significant dislocation and damage in some parishes, in particular the southern section of the island, which includes St. Elizabeth, Clarendon and Manchester. She relayed reports of damage to property and the road network across sections of the island. And as Jamaica begins its recovery from the effects of Hurricane Barrow, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is advising the public to observe the following tips. Do not go outside until absolutely necessary. Wear water boots or closed shoes. 
wear gloves when clearing debris or disposing of dirty water. If you get a puncture wound, such as a nail stick or a cut, and you have not been immunized in the last 10 years, seek medical attention immediately. Do not allow children to play in the water outside. Ensure that bleach, kerosene, and other harmful chemicals are properly labeled and kept out of the reach of children. Time now for the business report with Denise Williams. Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Business Report. I'm Denise Willems, your guide through the latest happenings in the world of business. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark says Jamaica has financial safeguards in place in the event of significant damage from Hurricane Beryl. In a media release, Dr. Clark said the Jamaican economy is fiscally and economically resilient to withstand natural disaster occurrences. He said the country has a credit contingent claim with the Inter-American Development Bank. It also has reinsurance arrangements with the Caribbean Catastrophe Reinsurance Facility and has just completed the placement of a catastrophe bond. Producers in the manufacturing industry faced an average 3% rise in cost associated with delivering inputs on an annual basis as at May. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica has attributed this to a 13% increase in the average cost of refined petroleum products and a 1.2% upward movement in costs associated with food and beverage. The Board of Directors of Trans Jamaican Highway has decided to postpone the 23rd annual general meeting of the company slated for Thursday, July 4. In a brief statement, Trans Jamaican Highway disclosed that the decision was taken in direct response to the imminent passage of Hurricane Beryl. The meeting has been rescheduled to next Tuesday, July 16, at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel. Trans Jamaica Highway urges all shareholders to stay safe during these times. The Jamaica Stock Exchange has advised that trading has been suspended in the chairs of Productive Business Solutions Limited PBS and Iron Rock Insurance Company, respective main and junior market firms effective July 2. In the case of PBS, the Jamaica Stock Exchange advises that in keeping with the JSC's main market rule 408-3, on audited annual financial statements, it has suspended trading in the shares of PBS pending the company's submission of its 2023 audited financial statements. PBS's 2023 audited financial statement became due on March 30 and is 93 days overdue as at July 1. Regarding the suspension of Iron Rock, this was done in keeping with the JSC's Junior Market Rule Appendix 2, Part 4, Section 1E, Quarterly Financial Statements, and JSC's Junior Market Rule Appendix 2, Part 4, Section 2E, on Audited Annual Financial Statements. Main Event Entertainment Group Limited has advised that it will postpone the annual general meeting which was slated for Thursday, July 4, 2024. The AGM has been rescheduled due to Hurricane Barrel and will instead be held Thursday, July 18, 2024 at the original venue AC Hotel in Kingston. It will begin at 2.30 p.m. The Jamaica Stock Exchange, which closed just after midday Tuesday in anticipation of the hurricane, disclosed that its operations will return to normalcy on Thursday unless otherwise advised. The Bank of Jamaica, which closed just after midday on Tuesday in anticipation of the hurricane, disclosed that its operations will return to normalcy on Thursday, July 4. For the credit report tip of the day, natural disasters can turn our lives upside down in an instant. The road to recovery is often challenging, but a strong credit score can be a powerful ally during these tough times. Here are four ways your credit score can aid your recovery after a natural disaster. Number one, access to emergency loans. 
A good credit score can make it easier to secure emergency loans with favorable terms. These funds can help you cover immediate expenses such as home repairs, medical bills, or temporary housing, providing a crucial financial bridge during the initial recovery phase. Second, lower interest rates. If you need to borrow money to rebuild or repair your property, a higher credit score can qualify you for loans with lower interest rates. This can significantly reduce your overall repayment burden, allowing you to focus more resources on recovery efforts. Third, higher credit limits. Credit cards with higher limits can be a lifesaver when you need to make urgent purchases or cover unexpected costs. A strong credit score increases your chances of having access to higher credit limits, giving you more flexibility to manage your finances during a crisis. And fourth, better terms on rebuilding loans. As you work to rebuild your home or business, you might need additional financing. A solid credit score can help you secure loans with better terms and conditions, making it easier to manage long-term recovery and reconstruction efforts. Maintaining a strong credit score is not just about financial stability. It's also about being prepared for the unexpected. In times of crisis, it can provide the financial resilience needed to navigate the challenges and start the journey towards recovery. Stay financially focused and prepared for whatever comes your way. And with that, we wrap up today's business report. I'm Denise Williams. Appreciate your company. Stay well informed. Stay ahead of the curve. Until our next update, take care. In regional news, Caribbean community leaders convened virtually on Tuesday to discuss the catastrophic impact of Hurricane Beryl, which ravaged the Windward Islands on Monday. The leaders agreed to appeal to the international community for financial relief to support the recovery efforts in the affected regions. Hurricane Beryl's deadly path resulted in several fatalities across the Caribbean, including three in Grenada, two in northeastern Venezuela and one in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and two in Jamaica. Officials have warned that the death toll could rise as rescue and recovery operations continue. Outgoing CARICOM chairman and Guyana's president, Ifran Ali, highlighted the severe destruction caused by the hurricane. He emphasized the urgent need for financial support, which includes immediate grants, long-term low-interest concessional loans, and assistance in restructuring existing loans. Ali also noted that CARICOM countries are mobilizing regional resources and aid in various forms to assist the affected areas. The leader's plea underscores the significant challenges faced by the Caribbean nations in the wake of natural disasters and the critical need for international solidarity and support. In Trinidad and Tobago, Education Minister Dr. Nyan Gadsby Dolly says the Ministry of Education is ready to assist Caribbean countries devastated by Hurricane Beryl. Her statement comes after Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley announced on Tuesday the willingness to allow school aged children from the devastated zones to be allowed into Trinidad and Tobago. Sunil Lala reports. Via a social media post on Tuesday, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley revealed that Trinidad and Tobago has offered to allow school-aged children from the devastated zones into this country if they have family here who may wish to house them during the school holiday period. It came following a virtual session of CARICOM heads on Tuesday following the passage and devastation caused by Hurricane Beryl in islands off St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Grenada. Speaking at the opening of a new wing at the Holy Name Convent in Port of Spain, Education Minister Dr. Nian Gatsby-Dolly welcomed the announcement by the Prime Minister. Today it could be them. Tomorrow we don't know what our situation is. If Beryl was a little bit uh, more southerly, where would we have been? And we would have liked them to reach out to us. So as much as we can do to assist, we will do. And once um, the Prime Minister elaborates on his plan with us and we are clear, we are going to move forward to assist in any way possible. She said all the details of the proposed offer have not yet been discussed in detail, but said the possibility exists if students from these islands need to attend school in the new term. 
Um, because of course the meeting was yesterday with the, with the Caricom heads. So we haven't heard the entire plan. Um, there may be a question of students remaining here to be able to go to school if that is a requirement. And once it is, then we will do what we can to assist. In, in just as we are doing with the migrants, of course we have an obligation to train and to make citizens to ensure that they have school places. But, you know, once we um, are able to assist, we will assist. And Minister Gatsby Dolly noted that there will also be discussions with the Ministry of Finance if and when required. So if a school has to accommodate and we need to you know, give a little more funding as we do to schools all the time, then that is what will be required and, and so we may need to um, make some accommodations, sometimes there's a prefab, so different things. So it depends on what the demand is because it may be that they can be accommodated in their countries in some way. And if so, um, that's fine. But if there's anything that we need to do and we require funding, then I know it will be a collaborative effort, including the ship. Hurricane Barrel caused devastation to several small islands, including Karaku, Kanuan, Union Island, and Meru. Sonolala, TTT News. Guyanese living in or visiting countries across the region were among those affected by the hurricane. In this Newsroom Guyana report, they took a look at some of the devastation that unfolded. This is Hurricane Beryl. It is a monstrous Category 5 storm that barreled across the southeastern Caribbean on Monday, leaving a trail of devastation and disruption in its path. This was its impact in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, for example. Sunita Gear, a Guyanese living in St. Vincent and Grenadines for more than 15 years, was brought to tears after the hurricane devastated parts of the country. My property has not been damaged, besides some planting and banana tree fell. But beside that, I'm safe and I'm okay. But uh, Union Island, where that was my first home, when I moved from Guyana, I was living in Union. 90% of the island, on the persons on the island is affected there. Well, the whole island is affected. 90% of the homes are destroyed completely. I came to tears last night when I found out because I had no access to the internet. So last night when I got in touch with some friends from the mainland who told me what is happening in Union and I went on the internet and I saw some pictures a little. The, inter the little data I have, it goes and come. So I was in tears last night when I saw what Union Island is today. There's no airport, nothing. It's completely demolished. Grenada was another Caribbean island particularly hard hit by the hurricane on Monday. Tobago, St. Lucia and Barbados were the other islands affected. Guyanese Rona Ramlal was one of the thousands of persons who travelled to Barbados to catch the final match of the T20 World Cup, the showdown between India and South Africa. She has, however, been unable to return home. Coming here last Saturday for the finals, I never expected to, to be caught up in this, this situation. The Red Cross is assessing damage in St. Lucia after Hurricane Beryl through the island appears to have avoided the worst of the storm's impact. Herbert Pierre, president of the St. Lucia and Caribbean Red Cross chapters, says the organization is also coordinating relief efforts in other storm-battered Caribbean islands. The Red Cross is one of the organizations charged with providing relief for residents in the wake of a disaster. The president of the St. Lucia Red Cross, Hubert Pierre, says preliminary indications are that though some communities suffered some setback from the storm, St. Lucia was spared the worst. Well, we are doing assessments now and you know the time in which we live. Um, we have had a lot of videos and uh, most of it is infrastructure, um, which is of course the government's business. We really care about people and the dignity and whatnot. So hence the reason we are out there looking for houses or homes or anybody who need anything that we can help them with to do this. So we are doing the assessments. As I said, we have the support of our friends who have brought their vehicles to us to help us. 
And the other thing today is a working day. So most persons have gone back to work. So hence the reason you don't see a whole set of volunteers on our balcony because they have to go back to work because the call to go back to work has come in. But we do have volunteers on the field working hard now even as we speak. The St. Lucia Red Cross president says with burial forming and intensifying in relatively quick time, members were wary. But concern for St. Lucia was allayed with the position and direction of burial indicating the island was not directly in the hurricane's path. When the forecast was first made, one had a lot of reasons to be very, very, very concerned. But after two days, you know, we started realizing that since it's about 10 degrees, there's no way it's going to climb to 14 degrees. But we would, it, it seemed to be a very powerful storm, so you don't know what's, what's going to happen. So we had reasons to be concerned. The veteran Red Cross executive has responsibilities beyond St. Lucia's shores. As the president of the Caribbean Red Cross, he has oversight responsibility for the relief efforts underway in the heavily impacted islands of the region. As an operations specialist, normally I would be going around the Caribbean and do a number of things. But um, as president of the Caribbean Red Cross, yes, I may have to go and visit, um, spend a day or two there, but I wouldn't go into the operations in detail. But working with the Federation to ensure that, you know, whatever is needed in these areas can be had. With a busy Atlantic hurricane season predicted, organizations like the Red Cross do not only have to be prepared, but have to pace themselves wisely to avoid burnout before the end of November, when the hurricane season officially comes to a close. Stanley Lucien for the HGS News Force. In sports, in Trinidad and Tobago, education and certification in sport management was the focus at the recent launch and graduation ceremony of the International Institute of Sports and Management Studies. Highly regarded sport administrator Brian Lewis lends his full support to the initiative. Nelson Mandela's words, education is the most powerful weapon to change Trinidad and Tobago to change our communities, to change our societies, to change our sports, and certainly to change football. The former president of the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee and the Caribbean Association of National Olympic Committees praised the co-founders Gary St. Rose, Shem Alexander, and Calvin Toussaint while rendering some advice. That's by the three visionaries will meet resistance because for some reason there is always resistance when ideas are not spoken in a European accent and not delivered by those of a lighter hue on a different hair color. If we say it, then it's an issue. But if Europeans say it, it's gospel. And that's it for the news on PBCJ. You can follow us on our social media platforms at PBC Jamaica. Thanks for watching.